This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi. Today let us discuss the spiraling technique or the whirling technique for creating rexes in intumescent cataracts. Well, the two stage rexes is my go-to technique for most intumescent cataracts and in my opinion it is the safest and most predictable way of getting the rexes right in these types of swollen cataracts. Uh, this is an excellent technique with high degree of predictable outcomes up to almost about 95% in my experience yeah but it takes a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more cumbersome now do we have an alternative for this yeah we do have an alternate method it's called as the spiral technique or the whirling technique of rexus creation in this video i'll demonstrate the technique and uh, highlight its secret and compare this technique with the standard two stage rexus in these intumescent lenses so let's get started the principle in this technique is we start off with the goal of doing a smaller rexus initially and as we are about to reach the end point we extend it using the thin remaining flap and this spiraling or the whirling is continued until we have the desired size of the capsular opening now all the cases which I'm going to show in this video will be intumescent lenses. Now the chamber is filled with dispersive OVD, the globe is stabilized. I'm using the Haldipurka forceps to puncture the capsule and then one of the flap is caught and I began tearing uh, of the flap. My goal is to create a small rexus. I'm using a combination of shearing and tearing technique to ensure that I have absolute control over the uh, tearing of the flap. As soon as I get a hint that I'm losing control over the tear, I'm switching to the tearing method for this section. Now please note that the flap is flat and is being pulled centripetally. Now once in control and just before I reach the end of the circle, I switch to the shearing technique wherein I am folding the flap over itself and the rexus is being enlarged holding this tiny flap. Again at this point it seems to be slightly out of control. OVD needs to be replenished. Please note the position of the cannula. It has to be placed at the periphery away from the opening. The flap is again held and the rexus is being enlarged in a very controlled manner. The small flap gives me excellent control and is unlikely to run away towards the equator. The rexus is finally complete and we have a decent sized rexus. The next case. Now there is some amount of spontaneous decompression happening. Uh, look at this aggressively liquefied cortex. Again the initial part of the small rexus is created using the tearing technique. The flap is held flat and pulled centripetally. In most instances this is the stage at which the rexus runs off towards the equator. So we need to be careful during the creation of the first smaller rexus. As soon as I near the end of the circle I hold the flap and instead of joining the circle I tear around it and using this thin flap of the capsule the rexus is now being enlarged. And this is called as a spiral or the whirling mode. I may have to do a couple of circles to achieve the desired size of rexus. But what is striking to note here is the amount of control we have. And it is uh, because of the small flap that we are able to have so much good control and we can make the capsule behave well. The next case, as soon as I see the aggressive fluid, it tells me that this is a less ominous swollen lens. There is some amount of spontaneous decompression happening. The other variants are the one where we have swollen jelly-like cortex and these are the one which usually cause the problems. Now I begin with the goal of a 3mm rexus and as soon as I near the end point, I begin enlarging the rexus now holding this thin flap. The striking feature about this technique is that we have great control over the tearing aspect using this tiny flap. A bigger flap can definitely not be so well controlled. Now with this technique the job gets done faster since it's completed in one go in most of the cases. When compared to the classic two stage rexis method wherein uh, I need to go in and come out a couple of times. 
Now we have a perfectly sized and center rexus. Many times I may use this technique of spiraling to create the smaller primary rexus as well in a two stage rexus because in a very swollen lens even creating the smaller rexus is challenging because of the high intracapsular tension. So this spiraling technique gives me better control even while creating a small primary mini rexus in the two stage rexus method as well. Of course, this rexus needs to be enlarged after decompression, which is done. Now, in this case, I start off with the goal of a slightly bigger rexus to begin with. Looks in control. But at this point, I realize that I don't have great control over the tear. And it is at risk of running towards the equator. I stop here, make the flap flat and then pull it centripetally. Timely intervention saved the rexus from running away. Once it is reined in, the thin flap is everted and using the shearing technique, the flap is folded and in a controlled manner, we could achieve a bigger rexus. Now this is a swollen lens with shallow anterior chamber and is packed with thick swollen cortex in the peripheral parts of the bag. The same technique of whirling is being used to create the rexus. Essentially, there is one important secret, which is critical for the success of this technique. That is, maintain the antechamber depth throughout the completion of the rexus. Since we are going two or three rounds before the rexus is completed in this spiral technique, the chamber maintenance becomes difficult as the OVD escapes out. And the key here is to use an OVD which stays for long during all these maneuvers. And hence I prefer dispersive OVD, uh, which is a combination of chondritin sulfate and sodium hyaluronate. One can also use cohesive OVD alone, that is sodium hyaluronate. So that is the secret here. They maintain the chamber well and we can go as many rounds as possible to enlarge the axis. Now, if one is using only HPMC, we can achieve this quite successfully by going through the side port, uh, which minimizes the loss of OVD, hence the chamber can be maintained. So the bottom line here is that, which I always keep telling, the secret is always in the chamber. Now moving on to the last case, I'm a little bit overconfident here. The initial tear is indicating a bigger rexus to begin with, but so far so good. But at this point, it does not look good. But again, timely recognition, and keeping the flap flat and then pulling it centripetally prevents it from running towards the equator. Now the whirling technique is continued to achieve a decent sized rexus. So to conclude, the spiral technique is an effective alternative to the two stage rexus technique when dealing with the intumescent lenses. It is quicker, but Definitely not as predictable as the two-stage Rexus method. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you for attention.